Yep. And President Obama was mm, hearing some good news possibly this morning. Take a listen. For the first time in over a decade, business leaders around the world have declared that China is no longer the world's number one place to invest. America is. Well, he said that, but it's not true. And our next guest has a reality check. Look, Joe Biden's standing up for you, too, Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, you know, the least I could do. <laughs> Tax to the max. The United States is the number one place for business, according to our president, remember? For the first time in over a decade, business leaders around the world have declared that China is no longer the world's number one place to invest. America is. Hmm, but according to Forbes, the president is wrong. The United States finishing in 14th place, Ireland is actually in first. So joining us now is economist Peter Marici. Peter, how does the president of the United States get that wrong? Well, he simply doesn't read the newspapers, or at least his speechwriters don't, which is not just Forbes. Other evaluations taken by, you know, nonpartisan organizations have found the United States sinking in the rankings, simply becoming a less desirable place to be. Yeah, and according to uh, Forbes, Ireland is the best country for business. We're 14th. Estonia beats us. Peter, what is it about what we're doing wrong where this is not such a good place to invest these days? Taxes and regulation. We have the highest corporate taxes in the industrialized world, perhaps on the entire planet. And we have the most cumbersome financial regulations. You know, in an effort to rein in J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs, we've terribly handicapped the likes of General Motors or, or Porsche or whoever else might want to come here. Mm -hmm. This has been a, a, a slide since 2009, according to the report. Is that correct? So is there anything that can be done to, to get us back on track? Was that deregulation? Well, we have to re-regulate. That was we have to streamline the regulations so they get done what they're supposed to get done without penalizing the innocent, whether it's small town banks, you know, or big businesses abroad. And let's face it, we need a president that understands private property. The Chrysler uh, bailout basically took away the property rights of the, of the lenders to Chrysler mm -hmm. and awarded them to the union. You know, that's the kind of high-handed confiscation that goes on in a place like Bolivia when it's just had a populist dictator roll into town. <laughs> I, you know, while this is a little dreary that we're in 14th place, according to Forbes, you were telling one of our producers a little while ago, we're not in 14th place. We're actually in 80th place. When it comes to financial freedom, which is so terribly important to business, you know, you put your money in, you want to make sure you can get your money back out again. We are 80th. Why? Sarbanes-Oxley. And think about how, you know, Eric Holder, our attorney general goes around harassing people. You know, you see uh, the, the attorney general rifling the, the phone records of Associated Press or bringing lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit in New York. But, you know, no one who's ever responsible really pays. It's just the companies that pay a lot of money. Uh, you know, that really chills international investors into thinking, well, you know, maybe America ain't mm -hmm. so friendly anymore. Sure. And you know what? It, a couple of nights ago, it was the State of the Union address I can hardly imagine the President of the United States saying, we're number 80. Yeah, yeah. just not good for me. They don't have the, you know, the, the finger, the big foam the finger. Big foam finger. It doesn't say for, you need one like that. All right. Uh, Professor Marici from the University of Maryland. Sir, thank you very much for joining us on this cold Thursday. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay. Next up on the run rundown, he can put the American people in danger by releasing our deepest spy secrets. But now Edward Snowden is nominated for a peace prize? That's what? great. And before you pack lunch today, is that apple a day thing really true? Dr. Siegel has the five foods your doctor.